and you know you talk about alk you walk about alk i think i don't know what all you stock the alk i don't know what are you going to do more with alk now <laughs> pfizer is uh, doing that so uh, again my first reactions when i heard about uh, uh, you know uh, first line strategies in alk positive non small cell lung cancer uh, was this you know this was a tweet which was done on 2020 by who which says that preliminary investigations uh, conducted by the chinese authorities have found no clear evidence of human to human transmission and if you are still thinking that what is the relation of that to this the relation is i just spoke about electenev and i am not going to speak about lord latenev <laughs> so i am sure most of you would be saying like this ab ye phas gaya ab how will i you know get out of this and that is why rajat uh, is here to see how am i able to wriggle myself out of this situation and uh, my subsequent reactions of that was if you want to look at an ideal man you know um, or an ideal drug so you know for a for a for somebody an ideal man does not smoke does not drink doesn't do drugs doesn't swear doesn't get angry and doesn't exist so you know my the lady over there agrees with that <laughs> absolutely right so you know there is nothing called as an ideal drug so you know you can have a, a perspe- you have a different battles of perspectives there so there is no ideal sequencing strategy and uh, there is your truth and there is my truth and there is as for the universal truth it doesn't exist so rajat can i make my point now and go on to lord latinus <laughs> ground is set for the, for for speaking about lord latinus for everyone over there no so i think it's a uh, it's a lot of time people do ask us what would you do and i think i would do what i did in the last uh, uh, panel you know i would discuss a lot with my uh, patients and then take it from there try to understand what exactly things are and try to understand the pluses and minuses of uh, both the drugs and then uh, put it across uh, to my uh, uh, my patient so the first question to the expert and i think we were there in the last panel when we were speaking about the ngs so how many of us venkat will start from the peripheral oncologist and the accidental panelist yes varajat uh, 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 venkat sir um leave it in the ngs uh, for the first start uh, that i will get a patient with a lung cancer is to get a biopsy sir to convince for biopsy okay. itself is uh, a big task seriously Yes, sir. because biopsy Not is now, Rajat. Biopsy, uh, biopsy is then a, 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 a four hours journey in gohati in a place where i there where i am there in that entire district lung biopsy is not done sir so okay. so the patient has to go to gohati and get the biopsy done but uh, the satisfactory thing is that uh, a patient who has come on the uh, stretcher able to get the biopsy all positive counsel for low light nips at least start done cleared no but so uh, so i mean i'm i'm slightly surprised venkat in the last 100 patients uh, that you see yesterday that you saw yesterday how many have you got a biopsy done so there is no other alternative so they go to gohati get the biopsy done get the block and we send to tmc kolkata for the okay and how much time does it all i mean this is almost like you know i mean uh, this is strange uh, akhil Yeah, it's uh, actually an eye opener. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was actually, you know, here we're talking about electenib and lorlatenib. Such a, it's okay. We we will talk to him. So what Venkat is saying, he works in Tejpur, Assam, and he's saying is there is no facilities for doing a biopsy at uh, there. The patient has lung to biopsy. Sir. Lung biopsy. The patient has to go to. Go, so that is why you do a good clinical examination to see whether the supraglav lymph nodes are there. But if you have to do a lymph node biopsy, a uh, 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 lung biopsy has to go to Guwahati. get a four hour journey from there come back with the block the block then goes to tmc kolkata then the report might come in a month's time and you know stuff here we are talking about electenem and lorlatenem but well, the stark reality of the issue is something different i mean yes, that for that particular patient she has meds all over the and all the organs sir she has sternal meds i requested the local surgeon so he removed the part and i sent to kolkata it is all positive sir okay so akhil uh, what is it in uh, varanasi modi's constituency <laughs> so we are uh, fortunate enough uh, to have uh, our in house uh, team where we definitely do uh, large chunk biopsy multiple core biopsy at least 5 to 6 scores uh, as needed for molecular test and how many times has the sample come as quantity not not sufficient so that is uh, usually uh, only in patients where we rely on pleural effusion and block making but i we it is our uh, uh, policy to do a biopsy even when we are sending pleural effusion for block so i would again agree you know i mean i mean pleural effusion cytology cell block i think dr sunil has just gone but the point here is that you know a lot of time the cell block always talk to your pathologist 
how much is the solidity how much is the tumor content is the tumor content good enough for doing ngs and ias season stuff like that or not see the point is if you do not have that tumor content then there is no point of relying on that test we need to talk to the molecular pathologist that's that's what my take is so rajat how many times that does the tissue come as not sufficient very rarely and even if it does a rebiopsy is available so a biopsy is not a problem uh, but then if you're talking about ngs of course ngs we are doing in house as well uh, and we are routinely doing ngs so how many times uh, your report comes as variant you know we yeah. were talking about v1 v2 v3 so v1 v3 for me is more of theoretical as of now i have not seen v1 v3 being written in any of the ngs okay. support maybe you are getting not getting them from your parent institute yeah okay fair enough <laughs> do you get an ngs and <laughs> Yes, sir. And I'm does the report come as V1, V3, and does it make a difference to you? We are doing most of the time NGS only, and it is reliable. And so very occasionally we are seeing that the sample is not uh, adequate for testing. But and but for NGS, you know, they do require a tumor content, uh, tumor solidity of at least twenty percent. Uh, do they write it across over there? I have seen many times. You know, I've got that. I told last time, you ten percent patient that tumor solidity, and they did everything on that. No, nothing formed. And she, little bit below, she wrote there that only ten percent tumor content was there. No, sorry, now center we are. Uh, you are doing it. Right, highlighting the tumor percentage. You routinely do IHC, so. Um, okay, uh, fair. Enough. So fair. one comment I would like to make. Yeah, variant one to three we get in the reports of the TMH, uh, but uh, it has prognostic significance, but doesn't add to the treatment selection. That yeah. is what we can see. That is that. So this is what uh, was the IC fifties among the variant V one and V three, and what we basically found out for V one, if the IC fifty for Grazotinib was here, for V three it is here, for you know Electinib it is here. For lorlatinib, by and large, it is the green one. Is by and large the similar for both V1 and V3. And maybe a uh, V1 and V3 will. I mean, V3 you will have more of lorlatinib. But this is preclinical. Now, what we did again at our center was we got a variant analysis done. We got an NGS done for them. And what we basically found out was even with crizotinib, there was no difference between V1 and V3. So a lot of time your preclinical data and what you propose and IC fifties and all it all looks good, very good on paper. But when it actually come onto the ground, it doesn't really uh, stand the test of time. For us, uh, it, there was no difference in crizotinib. We are now routinely doing NGS for every. I mean, most likely next year or next year, next year, I'll tell you the data about electinib and lorlatinib also. But to me, uh, the importance of V3 is it will not do as well. Uh, you have concurrent commutations. We have already seen it will not. It will not do as well. That's all that I am interested right now is. And Akhil very rightly said it's just a. It's just saying it's a poor prognostic factor prediction. You can give whatever you want on that. One more point: uh, variant three has more chances of having G one two zero two R. G one two zero two R. So but at least thirty three percent patients who are variant three will have G one two zero two R. So next choice of treatment without biopsy becomes directly lollard. Fantastic. So again, you know, first line treatment of uh, I'll create a non small cell lung cancer. We are spoiled for choices here. And uh, uh, we have spoken about how do we discuss, so we will not discuss that. Let me uh, rate them, not me. Rate the following factors according to this on a scale of zero to ten. When a patient comes to you, this is a doctor's uh, very smartly. Akhil has given it to Venkat. <laughs> very smartly. See, this is this is this is what they do, and this is exactly Modi's Shishya. <laughs> very smartly on this question has given it to Venkat. <laughs> okay, Venkat. So for you. Uh, the trade-off between safety, efficacy, everything. Second line strategies. How much would you really want to? Um, you know, there was Shah Rukh Khan dialogue in uh, that movie. Na, kisi ke baal achhe hain, kisi ki aankhe achhi hain. So you know, you can't take out the best from everything, right? Sure. So what is it for you? So most important is CNS efficacy. Uh, the most important is CNS efficacy because we know that most most of the drugs do well in all all almost all the molecules. They will. So the factor that I will consider while selecting the molecule is CNS efficacy. CNS efficacy. Akhil. So definitely CNS efficacy an important parameter, but what is that? There is should be a balance of the all the factors. Okay. It should not be like that. One drug is very safe, but it is not effective. Then what is the use of us using that Fair safe enough. drug? So upon what level of uh, so between safety and efficacy? You know, in the last panel, everybody said the drug is to be taken for three years. You know, hypercholesterolemia, this and that. We will not. So I mean, let's say eight on ten is efficacy. Safety is how much? Or this is how much? Rajat. Uh, for CNS efficacy, I'd, I'd say ten on ten probably. Okay. Uh, progression free survival. So, how survival. many patients, Rajat, of ALK rare and non-small cell lung cancer have got uh, brain matter diagnosis? Thirty percent. Thirty percent. Twenty percent more will get. 
So yes. your choice of treatment will be lot larger than fifty percent of people. I agree. I completely agree. Even in the last, you time, didn't said, agree. Last in the no, last no, one only. I said that is the only point that I think it should be in favor of lot larger. Thirty percent. First line that if the patient is having a, a upfront brain metastasis, uh, if you look at the Kaplan Meier curve of the uh, intracranial progression of of I'll, brown, it is like uh, I'll, I'll, you know, it's, it's, it's a line. A very, it's very not very a. Thing. It's line. It's not a curve. Yes, sir. That's for me, sir. All the factors are important because we are seeing heterogeneous population. I can't rely on only one factor. Okay, fair enough. Po- typical politician answer. Now, mm-hmm. I'll come to you. I'll just come to you. I'll just show you some data about the crown. So, crown, as we know, was a, a study between Lalatinib and uh, Crizotinib. Uh, the update was presented in AACR 2022, and uh, this was the data which was there. A three-year PFS of 63.5 percent versus 18.8 percent, and that was actually. a uh, mind blowing uh, exactly what i exactly say that there was no subgroup which did not derive a benefit from uh, latinib everybody this is very very important and that is what everybody is saying uh, you know uh, pfs in patients with or without brain line metastasis was fantastic not reached not reached in the uh, latinib arm time to intercranial progression was also longer with latinib than with crizotinib if you look at this 92.3% were Are not progressing at three years, and that is what uh, we felt. And this is the this is the slide as far as you know. I think Pfizer should actually put it across over there, uh, outside their uh, 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 their office. You know, if you do not have a brain met, there is a ninety nine percent chance at three years that you will not develop a brain met. So I mean that is something. And you know, if if you are a big fan of uh, that uh, the met Twitter. in met twitter it actually came as this is not a graph this is a line i mean where is the graph in this this is almost a straight line so this is for me a uh, absolutely a uh, fantastic thing which actually got a sign of wishing from there so your thoughts we'll start from dr uh, uh, dr moses so tell me one thing as a clinical radiation oncologist don't you you must not be liking uh, lord latanib no You know, he asked me a very nice question: asymptomatic brain meds. Would you irradiate? How, so, has your practice changed from giving radiotherapy uh, to giving oral TKIs? Yeah, I mean, uh, with all these brain penetrant TKIs, we always wait for the, a decision on uh, whether the patient will be able to afford those drugs. There, so let us say affordability is there. Yeah. So then we, I mean, I am very happy to avoid full brain. You are very happy to avoid radiation. Has there been a paradigm shift in your, uh, uh, your uh, practice, uh, Doctor Ajay, to you know, in which you have not given, or in the in the time you give radiation, has there been a paradigm shift? Uh, no, sir. Right now, still we are dollar uh, is not in my first line. Electronever has also got seventy percent response rate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I am concerned about the subsequent therapies. No. Okay. Fair enough. So no, let's talk about the brain. Let us say you have some two three lesion uh, lesions in the brain, one two point one point two centimeter. Five lesions are there in the brain. You want to give them lord latinib, and I'll come to the case over here. Or you want to say give SRS or whole brain RT, and then I will give my uh, TKIs. What would you say? Sir, if electinib is the option, I will prefer the electinib. Okay, we will come to that, Rajat. So, like I said, uh, Lord Latinib for me is in the first line. If uh, we are having talking about brain metastasis, but brain metastasis also uh, should be uh, taken in the context of it it being in uh, probably three or four subheadings. If I talk about uh, asymptomatic brain metastasis, it's a tricky uh, term probably to use because there can be patients who are right now asymptomatic, but they are having uh, involvement of critical brain sites. They are having a, a good period. So, in edema, that patient, uh, let's say shift on MRI. So, so what would you do? Will you give radiation? These patients, I still would like to give radiation. Why? What is the uh, doctor Arun? Uh, doctor Moses, oh, how much is the response rate of SRS or whole brain? Visa vis, you know, I will show you some data about uh, uh, brain. Uh, this thing, I will show you. I mean, just one second. I will just go and discuss the pros and cons. We'll discuss later. I think I'll come to that later. Let's. This is the patient that I was um, uh, talking about. This is a 65-year-old male with a history of some cough and backache and everything. And he, we can all see there are, you know, I don't have the MRI image. There is some edema over here. The central lesion. The patient absolutely asymptomatic for brain. There are five lesions which are there. There is a good amount of pre-lesion edema also, but we can see. What the alk positive young fit male? What would you do? Asymptomatic. I wouldn't give them any brain radiation. You would. So the radiation oncologist says no radiation. No radiation. No radiation. No brain radiation. Why? Five lesions you said. There's so much of peri-lesion edema. So you said peri-lesion edema, peripheral lesion in the brain. This peri-lesion can still. Okay, this guy has a lesion cerebellum. Yeah, so cerebellum. I'm talking about patients who are having infratentorial, supratentorial uh, 
almost diffuse metastasis in the brain. These are the patients, like I was talking about in the previous panel, also I've burnt my fingers giving uh, a particular molecule, and then uh, patients. The plural not of the plural of uh, two patients is not evidence, Rajat. I mean, you know, we all have burnt our fingers in giving the this thing, but. Akhil, what would you do? And I'll show you some data on that, you know, uh, this Akhil. So there is an option to avoid radiation, but uh, we should be very cautious uh, while avoiding radiation in such patient with significant edema because the patient might develop uh, severe uh, seizures and might uh, deteriorate. So that is a concern. So like in impending visceral crisis in breast cancer, we have impending uh, brain. Uh, yes. Yeah, but uh, giving radiation is also not going to immediately have an yeah. effect. So you give steroids. <laughs> Okay, Venkat. Right, will be there definitely. <laughs> yes, Venkat, what would you do? Um, so, a similar case was being discussed in the molecular tumor, uh, online tumor board uh, across the seven centers of ACCF, sir. That was the only medical oncologist, the rest are clinical oncologist, mainly radiation oncologist. I said no radiation for all positive patients you. and the help broke down. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay, so this is what the data about uh, what I will show you is I'm comparing crown. Versus I'm comparing LX. And if you look over here, confirmed intracranial overall response rate was 59%. Complete intracranial response was seen in 59.5% in patients who had any brain meds. If you had at least one measurable brain meds, you have an intracranial CR or a complete intracranial response rate in 72.2%. So in fact, to me, I mean, the paradigm shift that I was talking about in my practice I don't remember having given whole brain RT to any patient in the last two, three years at the time they are post all these lines of treatment. Even in the, uh, we avoid giving radiotherapy to uh, anyone who is asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic, we give this. We probably, if it's a single and symptomatic one, we would go and do a neurosurgery and then go ahead and give something. We need, we tend to avoid whole brain RT. We tend to avoid even SRS because with SRS, what we are seeing now, as I said in the last panel, was radiation necrosis. And then the patients are undergoing surgery after because these people are now living for two to three years. And your radiologists are not able to determine that what exactly are we, you know, is it PD, is it radiation necrosis? You're not really telling about that. And if you really look at the uh, HR value for intracranial time to progression, it's actually 0 0.07. And this is an HR, this is not a P value. And this is one, uh, one uh, trial in which, you know, the P value looks like an HR value. Now, let's look at the uh, data efficacy also, and I'll go for over here. The pros and cons of Lord Latinib, I think the time is less, and I would like to tell you both. The pros of Lord Latinib basically are uh, imp impressive HR, impressive HR. It causes a third brain barrier. The latest ACR data actually is mouthwatering, and I'll show you the data exactly in context with the uh, LX trial. The cons are, I would not say unfavorable toxicity profile. I'll say a different toxicity profile. Uh, what after Lord Latinib? And the final data remains to be seen. So this is the data. At 36 months, this is the, the data over here is the comparison of an HR value. Your HR is 0.27 at 36 months maturity. Lord Latinib versus Krizatinib. And over here it is 0.43 with LX. So if just in case Lord Latinib had come five years earlier than uh, uh, Electinib, Electinib, the, 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 you know, the comparator arm would have been a totally different arm. So both of them are absolutely right. I think if you have a young, fit male, and this is what exactly I'm telling you, the HR for uh, uh, electinib, for sorry, the HR for latinib is 0 0.21, 0 0.28, and it's 0.43 for this. So definitely uh, things are there. The only speculation right now is median PFS for electinib is 34.8. latinib is six or seven months after that. What? And I think December, the data is going to be out. In the last meeting in the uh, best of FASCO, I said 43 months. I was immediately corrected by a lot of people who said, they are expecting a 48 to 49 months PFS in the crown. So Venkat, if you have 49 months PFS in uh, crown, will you shift? Uh, definitely with CNS meds. Without CNS meds. Uh, so when I have option to have a direct train, why will I take a pickup station, sir? I didn't get you. When I have a direct train, why when will you I... Have a direct train. So when you have a direct train... There's For one... the longer PFS. Absolutely fantastic. Akhil. 50, 48, 49 months. Will you shift? So definitely, if it is crossing 50 months, I would be happy to use it. Okay. Rajat? Yeah, anything above 45, 46, certainly yes. Anything above 45, 46. Yes, Rajat said 43, 56 in the last one. <laughs> now he has gone down 12 months over there. <laughs> yes. For me also, sir, because cost for both are same. 
ఓకే నాట్ కన్సర్న్డ్ ఓకే అనదర్ అడ్వాంటేజ్ అనదర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ అడ్వాంటేజ్ ఇస్ ద పిల్ బర్డెన్ దట్ ఇస్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ when we counsel the patient uh, it becomes different so again the safety data i mean i'm sorry dr mojis i didn't come to you the, just the last uh, two minutes i think uh, after this i have just 30 seconds and i'll ask your question answer your question the toxicity profile is very very important and i would like to remind everyone uh, who is over here whenever you start a patient on lorlatinib please do not tell the patient it is imatinib or gefitinib or something please call the patient after 7 days tell them three toxicities one hypertriglyceridemia will occur two weight gain will occur sugar may increase neurocognitive dysfunction may happen patients will come and tell mujhe to kuch nahi hota hai mere to aaj tak cholesterol bilkul dik gaya tell them boss nothing will happen you will have an increase in out of 25 patients that we gave uh, latinib in the second line in our clinical trial 23 on 25 patients develop hypertriglyceridemia develop within 2 to 4 weeks weight gain definitely will occur but again if you see over here discontinuation due to aes was only actually uh, you know 7% in lorla- in lorlatinib was 14% in electinib drug reduction also was more you should know i mean you know it's it's not a difficult drug it's a different drug and you need to be prepared you know like with serotonin you need to monitor the amylase sugar everything else with this the qtc is the with lorlatinib you need to mention the triglycerides and the weight gain and everything over there and yes uh, akhil you have a point yeah yeah so i was just trying to uh, uh, highlight our own data hmm. that is actually kumar's uh, uh, opinion so we have 41 patients who have received lorlatinib most of these were compassionate access program who received in the second line 85% patient had hypertriglyceridemia our policy is to start rosuvastatin and fenofibrate both at the baseline even when it is completely normal from the yeah, day no. one so our policy was slightly different i mean i call them on day 15 i start with rosuvastatin if the triglycerides are more than 400 then i add fenofibrate uh, aap tata wale ho aap kuch bhi kar sakte ho hum private wale hum nahi kar sakte hain because that is what was written in the book that is what i do so one thing i did was i asked my internal medicine guy ki yaar kaise karna hai triglycerides tell us what to do so rosuvast 10 mg doesn't make a difference 20 mg fenofibrate more the fx triglycerides are more than 3 and 500 add fenofibrate that's a simple medicine rule which al- almost everything has done weight gain will occur we have had a patient who had increased 10 to 15 kg but the brain meds i haven't seen a single patient actually not responding to the uh, meds over here this is uh, what is very very important four wand four arm to be prepared is actually uh half the victory with lord latin call them in two weeks time call them in seven days time and then tell them what happens two more minutes what after lord latin is it a concern uh i'll go to akhil only first no yeah, definitely it's a concern but when uh it is able to give the combined efficacy electin first you give electin uh 35 months five months uh, 5.5 months is expected with lord latin it is 40 42 months but if you are getting already close to 50 months it's it's fine for me so but uh, there are things which are coming after lorlatinib also and now uh, yeah, we have I, i think you know the very important thing is you are now going to get met amplification uh, uh, ashish spoke very nicely about capmatinib met amplification as a resistance mechanism keras 12c as a resistance mechanism fourth generation alk tkis are now coming which may be able to take care of the uh, things post lorlatinib also one point of caution uh, i have had a lot of uh, consultations with the uh, ross camage and everything nobody seems to be believing in giving abcp after uh, alk a uh, typically uh, immunotherapy will work after egfr doesn't really work very well the abcp combination uh, doesn't really work yeah, even uh, the well. subgroup analysis of uh, that trial was that. not uh, showing yes. that so that is what we exactly did uh, the rapidly evolving landscape has changed slightly uh, from the rosh to the uh, to the this thing the green curve which was there before less has now come on the right thing but i think uh, that's just a perspective difference to conclude Uh, there are a lot of drugs which are there uh, you know which are making life very comfortable for the patient and uh, i don't know about others this is the patient and the medical oncologists who are now spoiled for choices and they are the ones who are smiling away to glory and then this uh, i would like to again conclude uh, everything we hear is an opinion not a fact everything we see is a perspective and not the truth you need to find your own truth that was the perspective of electinib and lorlatinib that was the most difficult last one hour of my academic life that i have done and i hope i have done justice thank you thank one, you one, one more point even with lorlatinib 50% patients progress in brain so that needs yeah. to be taken they will come over there yeah. in the end yes you had a point to the mod, to the panelist <laughs> <laughs>
Absolutely right perspective. I mean, you know, you are right when somebody has to take the drug for five years, but just in case somebody has got multiple brain meds and you have a response over there. So, you know, it, you have to weigh the pros and cons. So there is no one right answer. That, that's exactly what I said in the beginning. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all my panelists. Thank you.